Okay, this is a regression analysis activity-based costing and choosing cost drivers problem. And I'll read problem 10-33 uh, that appears on the screen in front of you. Larry Chu, the plant controller at Rohan Plastics, wants to identify cost drivers for support overhead costs. Indirect support consists of skilled staff responsible for the efficient functioning of all aspects, and that includes setups, production, maintenance, and quality control of the plastic injection molding facility. In talking to the support staff, Chu has the impression that the staff spends a sizable portion of their time ensuring that the equipment is set up correctly and checking that the first units of production in each batch are of good quality. All right, and then we have some data that he has in front of us, right to the left of my mouse there. So by month, for the past 12 months, he's uh, jotted down the total support cost per month, the number of machine hours that were used in the month, and the number of batches. And Chu estimates the following two regression equations. So he says y, which would be the support overhead cost, right, the dependent variable, is equal to $28,089 plus $1023 dollars per machine hour or he comes up with sixteen thousand thirty one dollars as um, a fixed court portion plus a hundred ninety seven dollars and thirty cents times the number of batches where y is the monthly support overhead costs okay then on the requirements we have a couple things let me slide down here um, first we're asked to plot the monthly data and the regression line for each of the following cost functions. So under 1A, we'll have to do it for support overhead costs, and under B, we'll plot it again using the number of batches. Oh, excuse me, 1A uses machine hours as the independent variable, and 1B uses the number of batches. And then we'll explain which cost driver uh, for support overhead costs would we choose. Okay, we'll tackle two and a three in a, in a moment, but let me slide up and let's illustrate how we could work this. Okay, now I've moved over to another screen and I've jotted in the information uh, that we had available on the first page. Now, what I want to do is point out here that this is the dependent variable, or y, and then this would be one independent variable that we're going to test, and this would be another. So I'll label those as x since they are independent variables, and y being the dependent variable. And then we'll want to graph x versus y and see what we can come up with. All right, now, to make this even easier, I'm going to cut and paste the x variables right here, and we'll label this machine hours. And then I'm going to uh, excuse... That's right, machine hours is our independent. And then I will put the support costs, so uh, we'll label this as overhead dollars. And we'll just cut and paste that as well. Okay, I'll take the underline off. And now that we've got it laid out as X and Y, I can simply highlight this range and go to Excel's Insert menu choose the scatter diagram type okay and it will graph that for us and let me put this um, uh, somewhere where we can see it uh, pretty easily um, I think right there should be fine actually if I I'm wondering if I should slide a little bit to give us some room why don't I expand this and chat, uh, that's not going to work actually. Uh, let me put that back to how it was. We'll just work with it right laying on top of the data. Okay, so now we've got our units of machine hours on the x-axis and um, and our overhead dollars on the y-axis. Now actually if we put this in dollar sign form we'd even get that on the graph so that looks a little bit um, formatted a little bit better. All right, now that's the one case and I'm gonna move that off to the side for now and then we'll go back and we'll create another case showing uh, another graph showing 
what we would do with number of batches. So here I'm going to um, copy number of batches somewhere and I'll just jot that right here and I'll jot in those same overhead costs right here. Now this might slide off the screen but that's fine. So this would be number of batches. We'll use that as a heading and then this of course is still the overhead costs again and I will uh, make those in dollars again so we can graph it. Okay, and then I'm going to graph that. Let me slide that up. Um, we will underline that too just to just to format it consistently and I will copy all of those up. We don't need underlines on the last one. It doesn't serve a purpose. And again I will go to the insert menu, choose the scatter diagram, click right there and I'll move this over here this time. Okay, and now we see the overhead uh, based on number of batches. Now, maybe what I ought to do is change the title just so we can say uh, see see the difference on the screen. This will overhead. This is based on batches, so I'll put that in so we can see it. And and we get a uh, now I'm going to move this off. Bring the other one back and change that one so that that we know the difference. This was overhead based on machine hours. And we see that show up on the graph as well. Okay, now the next thing they did is say to print or plot the regression line. And the easiest way to do that using Excel is we right click on the lines and we say add a trend line. And it will add that line for us. Um, you can see that on the graph here. But I'm let me slide this over. I'm also going to show uh, the equation that we get as well as the r, r squared because I think uh, that provides some information to help us evaluate how well the regression the data fits the regression line or another way of saying that is how well does the equation uh, work with our data okay so I'll hit OK and now we've get the formula that appears right on the screen um, and you can see that there let me make that just a little bit bigger uh, maybe maybe make that 12 and then you can see that on the screen. Okay, so what it's telling us is, if I can slide this the right way, it's saying that overhead dollars y is equal to 10.226x plus a fixed cost portion of 28089. Now that fixed co cost portion is where this line crosses the axis. So if you were to follow this line all the way here, it will hit over on the y-axis at about $28,000. The 10.226 tells us for every machine hour, we incur $10.226 costs of overhead per unit. And the R-squared, which can range from 0 to 100%, tells us the goodness of the fit. And in this case, it tells us that our explanation explains about 20% uh, of the basis for, um, uh, uh, let me say this another way, about 20% on a scale of 0 to 100% can be explained by our relationship. The rest is due to other factors. Okay, let me slide that one off and we'll take a look at batches. So I'll put batches here, now it's based on this data in here, right? And we'll right click again on the points, add a trend line, add the R, the equation and the R squared. Um, it defaults to linear, that's what we want because we're dealing with linear regression. And then I will make that a little bit bigger so we can see it. Um, let's make that maybe a size 12. Okay, and what does that tell us? Let's slide it where we can see it. Now it says that overhead dollars are equal to $197.30 per every batch we incur plus a fixed amount of $16,031. And again, if we draw this line all the way down, it will cross the y-axis at around $16,000. But look at the R squared here. On a range of 0 to 100 percent, R our equation, the y equals 197.3x plus 16031, is now explaining 68% of the reason um, uh, of that relationship. So we've got a much better relationship. And 
Let's visually compare those and we'll see that that is indeed the case. Okay, although the graphs aren't the same size, um, I think I can expand them and make them. They're a little bit close to the same size. What you see is we've got lots of variation between where the data point lies and where the line draws when we're using machine hours, right? So what we would expect is that this relationship isn't as good, and certainly R squared is only 20%. But in the second case with batches, what we're seeing is there's less variation between the data point where the data point lies and where the line is. In fact, we've got quite a few that almost appear right on the line itself. And that, ex that has a better goodness of fit, 68% being explained. Okay, now the formulas we got actually matched what, uh, our, what Larry Chu came up with, right? He came up with 28089 plus 1023 and 16031 plus 197.30. And that's essentially what we have, right? If we round that to two places, we're right on the mark. So we agree with his work here. Let's talk about what it means. Uh, the number of batches seems to be more plausible to support uh, to explain support overhead costs rather than machine hours. Now, his support staff indicated that they spend a good portion of their time at the start of each batch ensuring that the equipment is set up correctly and checking the first units of production to make sure they're good quality. Um, and and we, the data seems to support that. Once the machine is working properly, uh, support staff aren't needed to supervise the running of the machines. And so that way we're going to get some variation. Okay, so support staff resources are more likely to vary with the number of batches rather than the number of machine hours. And that really is the conclusion. Um, let's talk a little bit about the slope of the regression line. If we look at these two charts, we see that the slope of the regression line is far steeper for batches than with machine hours. And we have less a, a scatter effect to the, to the regression line. So again, the relatively steep Sleep, steep slope under using overhead based on batches uh, g also leads us to conclude that we've got a better relationship. Now, on the other hand, a relatively flat regression line for machine hours with more scatter will indicate that there's a weaker or no relationship between support overhead cost and machine hours. And again, the R squared uh, gives us a numerical value that allows us to see that relationship.